Welcome to a new Lean Agile playbook for executives and an opportunity to unlearn old behaviors and learn something new. Based on the history of SAFE, this session will cover examples of the principle Inspect and Adapt. By end of the session, you can identify learnings and how the framework developed. My name is Alex Kemkins. I'm Agile coach for over 15 years and work with executives and business leaders today. My focus are global and large enterprises that want to establish a lean Agile mindset and culture to survive the digital age. As head of Lean Agile Center of Excellence, I'm contributing to the transformation of a global automotive supplier today. Within this corporation, we use the Skate Agile framework as common reference which is why I took my SPC classes recently. This reminded me of the various changes the framework was undergoing over time. This session is a result of my learning. Ever since Kanban and the Agile Manifesto had been introduced, large corporations tried to apply these concepts. Coming from the Taylor principles, they misunderstood the success of the new companies as improved efficiency and use of resources. Agile became the synonym for being faster and cost less. The misunderstanding was fostered by consultants and coaches using this as their primary selling point. In skate environments, the common implementation journey for small companies at this time failed due to the complexity and dependencies of the organizations. Various scaling alternatives emerged from this need. As corporations typically evaluate success after one to two years, several button-up transformations failed too. SAFE is one of the rare frameworks starting at the top of the organization with senior management trainings. This journey gives the opportunity for a fast push towards the understanding of the transformation benefits. I'm known for the sentence, we are not going to be safe with safe, expressing that there is no shortcut for our company and we will still need to go through the whole implementation journey. At the same time, it's no surprise that many corporations rely on safe as their common ground and language to deliver enterprise solutions. One of the starting points from Dean had been the ideas around a new way of requirements engineering. With that, he enabled us to unlearn practices such as strict V-model-based separation of work. With the first books, we learned that this can be done in iterations and cross-functional teams to scale for software agility. Coordinating multiple teams working on the same solution intent was the first goal of the big picture. To achieve this with Lean Agile Values and Principle was demonstrated well. This structure was further developed into the three core levels that guide the flow of work still today. And at the same time, the center of intention was how software development can be scaled. Combined discipline solutions had been too complex. For we started to learn that the core artifacts are scalable and work in various levels. At the same time, SAFE realized the foundation of the organization requires more than just the dedicated roles of the flow to get work done. This led into the integration of enterprise visions in strategic themes, alignment, investment horizons, and in a general more stronger focus on the lean portfolio management, supporting the transformation of the whole enterprise organization. In the end, this led towards a very structured approach from the program portfolio management into the backlogs of the Agile teams. This approach allowed to build in the code quality and with that ensures scaling towards the whole solution. With the unlearning and unlearnings of fellows, trainers and consultants, the big picture developed over time. This shaped the understanding that a more general approach to support Agile businesses is needed and the foundation was established. 
the next phase of the development started. We learned that scaling towards the agile release train supports the flow combined with the portfolio management we can establish a real development output. Focus on educating the leaders helps to support the overall transformation and the journey. The unlearning of old habits in engineering and software development allowed organizations to experiment with new collaboration and communication flows. This approach fostered innovation in technology and organizational development that was implemented in the same framework over the upcoming years. In version 3.0, the framework learned how to establish flow in large engineering systems with multiple agile release trains. This was achieved by implementing shared services teams and DevOps on the level of the train. The team agility and responsibility became more important and explicitly mentioned. The framework unlearned some of its old structural details regarding software engineering during the next step of scaling. Additionally, we learned that specific solution intents and solution content is needed to make sure the multiple agile release trains stay on track into the same direction. Activities originally only in the portfolio level emerged now in the large solution layer of the framework, allowing large corporations to more easily find themselves in the framework concept. These operations, however, misinterpreted the layer of flow with organizational hierarchies and the levels of responsibilities. This led to today's version, which incorporated these learnings with a radical shift towards business agility. The specialization to software was unlearned as it was understood that the support of the whole organization is needed. In a result, we have now a network operation system clearly separating between flow and the structural hierarchy. Even so, you might have the top people and talents in your organization, it is unlikely that you can stay on this high level over time, especially in an area with so many influences, uncertainties and high complexity as our VUCA world. In my honest opinion, any strategy that is not based on exchanging knowledge and building an open spirit environment is inferior. Orchestration of flow of work is good for anybody within a living organization. It is nothing special to engineers or developers. All of our employees will benefit from it. SAFE demonstrates well how the inspect and adapt mindset and practices help to drive unlearning and learning. With this reflection, the framework developed from a simple approach of scaling agile teams towards a blueprint for corporations. Understanding that the lean agile management is relevant for all of us allows the corporation to apply the principles for all employees. With that, an environment based on trust, innovation and constant improvements can be established. I've seen many organizations applying lean agile values and principles within their teams. Especially in large enterprise organizations, it became obvious that only with exchanging of ideas, thoughts, constraints and solutions the fast feedback cycles based on inspect and adapt are possible. With that, I consider this open spirit mindset a key element to empower the disruption and transformation for the whole organization. It is one of the important aspects for a coach to be persistent in leading by the lean age of values and principles. Sometimes you are lucky to be surprised by many little things the teams realize using their freedom to act. Celebrate these findings. They will foster the movement. Thank you very much for listening to the history of SAFE. As a coach with Lean Agile Mindset, I'm highly interested in your feedback, thoughts, and especially how you rate your time invested in this microlearning. So please drop me a comment or reach out to get in touch. All the best. Happy unlearning, Alex.